Hey guys, here's a USB to uh, CAN bus um, adapter. Um, it's called uh, CANABLE or CANABLE. I'm not sure, quite sure what the name is, but um, it's uh, made by Protofusion.org. Um, here it has a STM32F042 uh, uh, microcontroller, uh, micro USB um, plug. Um, has a green LED, blue LED, uh, the can um, transceiver. Um, has two jumpers. Uh, this jumper right here is for the bootloader, and this jumper is for the 120 ohm um, terminating resistor. Then here we have our uh, screw terminals. So we got um, here we got plus five volts ground and can high can low terminals. Um, so we'll go ahead and go and um, show you how to set up the STM32 uh, Cube IDE. All right, guys. So go ahead and open up uh, the Cube IDE. Uh, the current version I'm using is uh, 1.2.1. Um, so we'll just go here to file new STM32 project. Um, Canable uses a STM32F042. And this is a C6 variant. And we use this first package here. Next, we'll call this Canable. Finish. Yes. All right, so what we need to do here is um, Go to connectivity, uh, USB, check this box, and then go to middleware, go to USB device, and for the class we'll select a custom HID. And here um, we're going to um, change a couple of these values, so the descriptor size um, we can change to 33, and I'll explain that in later in the video. And then the buffer size will be 17. All right. So now, if you check, look at this uh, tab here. We have a little red uh, X. Uh, we need to click this tab, and I'm just going to go ahead and run this automatic resolver. Okay. And what we need to do is look at this EPB1 um, register, and we can see that um, uh, its value is at 48 megahertz. So we need to remember remember that. And depending on what kind of microcontroller you're using, uh, the frequency may be different, uh, depending how this is all set up. Uh, but for this uh, can evil, it uses 48 um, megahertz for the can uh, peripheral. All right, so go back to here, and then we'll select CAN. Uh, check this box, and then we'll enable this interrupt, and then go to this perimeter settings, and we're going to set this up for 500 kilobits per second uh, baud rate. And there's a website um, called uh, bittiming.can-wiki.info. I'm going to bring this up here. So what we need to do is uh, in this drop down select SD microelectronics and then uh, for that APB1 uh, we'll put in that 48 megahertz and then um, the sample point and uh, SJW we'll just leave at default and then here we'll put in the 500 kilobits per second and click this button table is generated and if you look at this row that's highlighted in yellow prescaler is at 6 uh, segment 1 is at 13 and segment 2 is 2 so those are the values that we're going to use 
Um, so put in six here. And here we'll select 13 and select two. And everything else uh, here we just leave at default. Operating mode is going to be normal. Um, and then what we need to do is set up the LED uh, IOs. So uh, LED. The green LED is on uh, PB0 and the blue LED is on PB1. So go ahead and left click this and we'll set it as a GPI, GPIO output. Left click and GP, GPIO output. And then we're going to rename these. Um, so uh, right click and we'll call this LED green. Click this and then this will be LED blue. Alright, so that's pretty much it for this. And what we can do is then uh, save all and it's going to want to generate code, so we'll say yes. Give this a few seconds here. Alright, so we don't need this anymore, so we can close this. And what we need to do is add that common libraries um, folder that you downloaded from GitHub. Um, so we need to right click on this project, go to properties, and then under this uh, C, C++ general, uh, we need to go to paths and symbols, and then under this uh, includes tab, we need to add um, file system, and depending where you um, copy that folder um, you're gonna uh, browse to it so I'm already here uh, so I'll just select that folder okay and then we need to add uh, the source location as well so it's exactly um, the same uh, folder so we just link to the folder check that browse so common library is selected already select okay and then we'll apply and close and we'll say yes to this and you can see that the common libraries folders has been added um, so our, our, these are all the um, common library uh, files that I have generated over the years um, and if you look here this uh, first file is the LSP library support package um, it has defines in it that uh, enable um, uh, these files so um, include uh, standard C libraries um, but uh, this is a template so you can uh, copy this and just uh, comment or uncomment what you need um, so right now I don't need this and what we need to do now is open up this core folder and um, I'm going to add some files so um, in the source one, uh, just right click that folder and we're going to add a new source file and we're going to call this polling routines and dot C finish and then we're going to add uh, several files to the include folder so um, header file polling routines dot H We're going to include um, an LSP dot H, and then we're going to add one more. And this is going to be protocol commands. All right, so. I'm going to go up, copy some code. Um, so protocol commands have some defines and these defines um, are commands that communicate between the um, Canable and the PC software. Um, so that's what these commands are for. So don't need this anymore. So close, save. Okay, I need to copy a, a library support package that that I need all right so uh, again including some of this uh, 
standard C files, and then um, these are the defines that um, are uncommented. So um, these are what we're going to use in the common libraries uh, folder. So um, don't need that. Save. And then what we need to do is go into main, and because a lot of the common libraries um, have it include for the main. Um, we need to add that LSP. Scroll down here and then um, add that pulling in it. And in this while loop, um, pulling routine. So this function call gets called once, and then this one uh, loops. So uh, you see here, and it gets called once, and pretty much what this is doing is just turning on the LED, so it indicates that the application code is running, and then it sets up the CAN filters, and uh, basically uh, for this um, um, device, we're just going to pass all um, IDs, so we're not going to filter on just uh, several can IDs we're actually passing all um, uh, can IDs and if you want you can just go to the common libraries folder and then just look it up right here to see what's going on um, filter I'm sorry and then can buffers uh, where we'd be saving uh, um, the can messages um, Then here's the polling routine called for main and it loops, so um, all this gets looped. Uh, we have a blinking LED, so if we get a CAM message, um, um, we set a, uh, a variable to indicate there is a CAM message, and then um, this call just checks to see if uh, that variable was set, and then uh, it starts uh, looping here to blink, start blinking an LED. Um, and then the rest of the code uh, that parses the USB message and um, here's some code that sends the string variables uh, back to the PC app, um, the you know, hardware, the version, and the, the APB1 frequency that uh, this uh, device is running at. And um, yeah, just parsing the CAN um, messages that uh, um, that's in the buffer. Um, and um, yeah, that's, that's it. Um, oh, and then we need to go to the USB device. We need to set that up. Uh, we go under app and select this uh, C file here. And we'll click that. And I need to add some code. Scroll down. And if you remember in the CAN uh, or the Cube MX, we. Uh, Define 33 uh, for this uh, descriptor size. So this is just an array. So um, let's see. Let me go ahead and copy that code. Go ahead and replace that. All right. So let me clean that up. And so there's actually going to be. There is 33 bytes total here, so that's why we defined this as 33. All right, so I need to add some more code. All right, so we're just including uh, some uh, common libraries um, include files here, and these are um, extern variables which are in the um, these uh, files here, um, not in, not the header files, but the, in the C files. Um, go ahead and add some more code. And here on the out event, all right. So here, the, whenever we receive a, um, a USB message. Um, Here's a pointer to that message, and basically, um, this add USB um, receive buffer is uh, 
just taking this uh, the values uh, or the message and just uh, adding it to a buffer um, so that's it for that and we'll go close that save and I believe that's it so we should be able to um, compile this with no errors Sorry, my uh, computer's kind of old. It's probably what, uh, probably about six years old. So it's a little slow. So uh, everything compiled correctly, and we'll go on to the next step. All right, so uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, program this uh, Canable with the uh, source code that we just compiled. Um, go ahead and um, open up the Cube Programmer, and on this device, we'll just go ahead and move this jumper over to the left, and plug in the USB. And then uh, here we just make sure that the uh, USB um, is selected and um, refresh this if you need to. Um, so we have USB 1 here and go ahead and connect. And uh, there's already a firmware in this uh, can able, but we'll go ahead and overwrite that with uh, um, actually, uh, I already had this uh, open, but uh, yeah, if you click this and open file and then the, Go ahead and select that file and then go ahead and click download here. And it's completed. And disconnect. And then unplug the USB cable. Move the jump over back to the left. Plug in the USB and the green LED turns on indicating that the application code is running. And so the next step, we'll just go ahead and connect uh, the CanX software to uh, show you that it is communicating. All right, guys. So um, here's the CanX uh, software, and uh, Canable is um, plugged in, and so we'll connect to it. And the uh, device is connected, and you can see here the hardware version and the firmware version. So uh, the um, PC software um, for the CanX um, connected to the device and requested information so it got its information and then also got the APB1 value here um, so it, um, being that it knows what um, frequency it's running at it knows um, uh, the different uh, baud rates and values that will be generated here correctly um, yeah, if this was at running at 42 megahertz, these values at 500 kilobits per second, this value would be would be different. But uh, for 48 megahertz, it is uh, uh, the BTR uh, register is um, this value. And so, um, yeah, the CAN able is connected to an, another um, CAN bus analyzer um, um, with a different software. So I'll go ahead and. Uh, go ahead and have that send some messages. And you can see here that it is um, receiving messages. And then here you can see that the Canable blue LED is blinking, um, indicating it is receiving uh, messages. So um, hopefully you like this video and uh, um, I'll try to make some more videos uh, in the future. Thanks.